Hi, today we're going to talk about the drug classes that are out there that the DEA runs. Um, so the DEA, which is the Drug Enforcement Agency, has a Controlled Substance Act. Um, the government passed the Controlled Substance Act um, and they maintain five schedules of classifications for controlled substances. The five schedules um, have to do with potential for abuse, potential for dependence, and medical value. So they take those three factors um, and they take a look at all three of those and they maintain um, schedules, okay, schedule one through schedule five, and they put all drugs into one of the five schedules depending on their potential for abuse potential for dependence, and then what medical value they have. Those are um, the three requirements that they take a look at um, when they're deciding which schedule that they fall under. So let's talk really quickly uh, before we get too far into the schedules about what we consider to be, uh, to be abuse and what we consider to be dependence. So abuse is inappropriate use, unwarranted use, overuse, may or may not be addictive. So when we consider a drug highly abused, it's a drug that is inappropriately or overused in a large extent. It's not necessarily that it's addictive. A person can overuse a drug multiple times without it necessarily being an addictive quality because then they could stop anytime they wanted to as well. Um, marijuana is a drug that is highly abused but not necessarily addictive. Okay, um, so that's what we consider abuse, is just inappropriate, unwarranted overuse. It may or may not be addictive. Dependence um, is where you think or your body actually physically becomes um, necessary to function. You have to have the drug. So there's two kinds of dependence, physical dependence and then psychological dependence. And you're gonna to wanna to jot both down, and I know the spot for dependence is small, so you can put it underneath the schedules if you want to. But physical dependence occurs when a drug becomes necessary for the person's body to function normally. So when you become physically dependent on a drug, if you were to stop taking the drug, you would actually die. It's possible for you to die. So um, like heroin, cocaine, some of the, um, some of the drugs that cause your heart rate or your brain to speed up and um, their stimulants and they have your body going at such a rapid pace, if somebody consistently takes that regularly over long periods of time, their body becomes dependent on it. And if you were just to all of a sudden have them stop taking heroin or stop taking cocaine, just like cold turkey, they can actually have a heart attack or a stroke and die because their body can't function without it because it's become dependent on it. Um, those are people that have to go into rehab facilities and they have to be kind of weaned off and given other drugs in replace of it slowly over time um, because their body is physically dependent on the drug. Um, psychological dependence occurs when a person thinks they need the drug to function normally. This happens a lot of times with the painkiller drugs, with your narcotics, um, where a person feels like they can't function because they're in so much pain and they have to have a drug in order to function and get rid of the pain. Um, it's not necessarily true. It's not like they would die without it, but they psychologically think that they're incapable of functioning without the drug. Um, so a dependence is where you either physically or mentally think you have to have it in order to function, and abuse is just unnecessary, unwarranted overuse of a drug. So now that you have those two kind of vocabulary words, we can start talking about the schedules. So schedule one, this is the highest schedule for the DEA, is... Um, the schedule that has the highest potential for abuse and no currently accepted medical use. So any drug that falls into a schedule one category for the DEA has a very high potential for abuse and doesn't have any accepted medical use at the federal level, okay? So here are some examples um, of drugs that fall into schedule one right now. Heroin, PCP, LSD, GHB, which is the date rape drug, and marijuana. Now. I know that you're all freaking out right now because you're like, marijuana is not, is medically accepted, blah, blah, blah. 
um, and that it's legal in several states because they've passed propositions. However, at the federal government level, marijuana is still considered an illegal drug and still does not have any medical acceptance. I just checked before I started this lesson and it is still considered on schedule one. Um, mainly because of its high, incredibly high potential for abuse, it's so incredibly overused and um, unwarrantedly used um, that it falls into Schedule 1. Heroin is another one. There's no medical use for it. It's extremely abused. PCP, LSD, GHB, none of those have um, medical value, and they all are very highly just abused drugs, and so those are what fall into a Schedule 1. By no means is this an exhaustive list, meaning that there are other drugs that fall into a Schedule 1. These are just some of the popular examples that I, I chose to give you guys. So Schedule 2. Schedule 2 drugs have still a very high potential for abuse, but have some medical use. So there's medicinal use available for them, so they fall as a Schedule 2 drug. Um, narcotics, a lot of your big time narcotics fall into Schedule 2. Morphine, opium, methadone, oxycodone. Um, there's an extremely high potential for abuse for those, um, but obviously they do have medicinal value, right? They give you them for surgeries, if you're in severe pain, etc. cetera. Um, but they can also very quickly turn into an abusive situation. Um, the stimulants that fall into Schedule 2, um, Aphetaminophen, which is like an Adderall, um, Ritalin, cocaine, those are some of the stimulants that fall into Schedule 2. Again, definitely things that they can use medical-wise, um, like cocaine is something that they give like really tiny babies who are born with heart defects to keep their heart pumping until they can get them into a surgery, like for a period of time. Um, there's people that take Ritalin and Adderall, right, for different medical conditions. So it's not that you can't take these, it's just they have a very high potential for abuse, a hard time for uh, people to overuse them. And then hallucinogens um, is the synthetic marijuana, dronabinol, I always say that wrong. Um, and this is the one where if a doctor is going to prescribe a, mar uh, a marijuana as like if somebody's going through cancer or something like that for um, medical value, that's the marijuana that they're going to be prescribed. And so because it's got some medicinal use, it falls into Schedule 2 instead of Schedule 1. Schedule 3 has less potential for abuse than 1 and 2. It does have current medical use, so drugs will have some type of um, medical use. And in Schedule 3, there's low to moderate physical dependence or high psychological dependence. So not as much physical dependence as far as needing the drug to physically function, but a lot of the drugs that fall into this category have high psychological dependence, meaning people feel like they need them to function even though they technically don't. A lot of the barbiturate preparations, which are the calming agents, and certain preparations of codeine, these are going to be your prescription drugs, not like the kind you're going to get off of a drip system in the hospital, but the kind that a doctor might prescribe to you after a surgery or something like that. That's kind of the level that we're at usually for Schedule 3. They're still going to have some... Um, some potential for abuse, but not quite as much as the Schedule 2s, um, but they usually have a lot of um, psychological dependence um, where people think they have to have it. You know, you go in and get your wisdom teeth pulled and all of a sudden, you know, you're taking Percocets for three weeks because you think you're in so much pain when really you probably could have weaned off of them potentially before that. Um, but you physically, you're psychologically think that you need them. Um, schedule 4, lower potential for abuse than Schedule 3, so we're kind of going down the scale here. Valid medical use and limited dependence. These are going to be things that sometimes people can become dependent with, but it's not quite as common. Um, Darvon, which is a pain reliever, okay, so these are going to start to be your a little bit less potent pain relievers is where we're going to fall here. Um, and then a lot of your depressants fall in this category, like Valium, which you take for anxiety, Librem, which is what they actually give you if you're going through alcohol withdrawal. Um, those are the types of things that they're going to give you at this level that it's possible for you to become dependent, but it's not as common. Um, so that's what those are going to be your Schedule 4 drugs. 
And then your schedule fives, these are low potential for abuse, valid medical use, and low potential for reducing dependence. This is gonna be like your over-the-counter stuff, your Robitussins, your, um, you know, extra strength Advils, Tylenols, things like that. The stuff that you can literally buy at the store and you can take fall into schedule five categories. It's possible to become dependent on them, um, but it's not, it's not super common and it's a pretty low abuse potential too. Like usually you only take Advil if you need it, not just because you want to take it or gives you any extra feelings of um, needing it at certain times. Um, so your schedule five drugs are your lower. So schedule one are your, um, are your kind of big time drugs, high potential for abuse and dependence and no medical value. And then it kind of goes down the ladder till you get to schedule five. Your schedule five drugs are low potential for abuse, high medical value and low potential for dependence. The DEA is the government agency responsible for drug enforcement at the federal and state levels. Um, they're the ones who made the Controlled Substance Act and they're the ones who enforce it. And so until they make a change at the federal level, then it trickles down to the state levels. The state levels have um, passed certain uh, laws and regulations that sometimes contradict the DEA, but ultimately if it crosses states and it goes to the federal government at all they end up trumping the, at the state or they end up trumping the state level in terms of what is allowed and what isn't so that's just kind of a quick recap of the five schedules of drugs um, and then Obviously, depending on where the drug falls depends on um, what your punishment would be for it, what um, they're taking a look at as far as trafficking it, so on and so forth. And we'll take a little bit more of an in-depth look at that um, individually in class.